Hey gang, welcome back to the channel and our bathroom remodel. So yesterday on the previous video, you saw us install the heat vent light and we moved the three gang switch over here on this wall. And since then we've done a few things to get ready to hang drywall, which we're going to do today. Only five sheets, so it should be pretty quick. Should be. Yep. So what we did, we added some blocking here, just some one by four that I had on both sides. And we'll put one sheet all the way around here. And then put a piece up there, a big piece. Again, we're just using up plywood and pieces of lumber from the job as blocking. So we got that done. Uh, this used to be the king stud for the doorway that was here. So we repurposed it and put it right here. Uh, a little tip, I really had nothing to nail to down here because this was notched to accommodate all the plumbing, just like this. So I put this block on top of it and that gave me something to fasten this into. And I did that at the top too. I used my laser to get that in line because this is not in line. I couldn't measure off of this. Now I come over here, we put a piece of plywood in here for a future towel ring that we know is gonna go here. And there's also one on that side, nice and strong with some pocket screws. A uh, little bit of time to do that, just a few minutes, but we'll pay off in the, in the end when all we gotta do is put that screw in there, right? If you notice the ceiling, we've already scraped the popcorn off of it. I did that on Monday. That was quick. And then this piece I didn't worry about because we're gonna pull that down and put a new piece of drywall over the whole thing. And then right here, these are two drops for our vanity lights. Once we get the vanity in and the sink, we'll center up, drill a hole, pull this through and install the electrical box after the fact. That way this is perfectly centered. That way the light is perfectly centered over the sink. And I think that's it. I think we're ready for our last step for drywall. We're gonna cut these angle stops off. A couple of reasons. I don't wanna cut a big hole in the drywall to get over that. And we're gonna change these anyway. So I just picked up these shark bite clamps. Let me show you the package. This is for half inch copper. It also fit PEX and CPVC. The water's off to the house. So let's cut these off. All right, so this tubing cutter does not swing all the way. And I actually forgot my mini tubing cutter at home, but check this out. I'll go as far as I can. Right now I'm through, but I can just carefully bend that. We're good. Done. All right, let's go do those two. All right, we're done with that? Yeah, but isn't the whole point of using the shark bite connectors so that we don't have to cut a big hole for these guys? I'm glad you brought that up. I, I intentionally left, left those on there. Oh, okay. I intentionally left those on there. All right. <laughs> what for? I wanted to show you how easy it is to take these off. These are completely reusable. They're almost $7 each. Um, and where you buy these, in a little package next to them, they sell a little U-shaped piece of plastic, but you don't need it. Just get a crescent wrench, get on the tubing. So you're gonna open it to the diameter of the tubing. Just like that. Nice. And you're pushing this collar in and it's releasing the teeth. And now I can remove that escutcheon that I did not leave on there accidentally. <laughs> See that? That was worth the seven dollars right there. Absolutely. All right, let's clean up and start hanging sheetrock. Right, real quick before we start hanging sheetrock, I wanted to mention one thing. There are only two original devices. So when I say a device, I mean an electrical device, so a switch and a plug. So we want to take these off. These little ears are called drywall ears, and we don't want to have to try to trim our drywall around that. We want to come close to the box. So we're going to remove these. And then you'll notice right here at the beginning of the, after demo, we, we labeled the circuits. So Jordan, if you can go turn those two off, I'll remove these and make them safe and we'll get started. All right, so on this ground fault, I made these back up like that. There's a ground fault in the master bath, which is protecting this one. And then there's another one downstream of here. So I had to hook those back up so that all the receptacles are, back, are turned back on tonight. 
one more thing we're gonna do uh, we've got this little escutcheon here it's gonna get in our way again we don't want to cut a huge hole in the drywall I'm just gonna cut it off with some snips there and that is sharp let's just take that off too and now we're ready to cut three clean holes in this piece all right gang I promise we're gonna start hanging drywall but as we were measuring for this section right here we noticed this right here can you see how this this piece is sagging this whole corner is sagging down oh yeah so this two by four which is on the flat was what the old light um what do we call it a light this light abomination the light well yep yeah, the light well was attached to but this is where the drywall should be this blocking on top of our double plates but look how far down below it this two by four is hanging so we're going to fix it because this would drive me crazy a over big, time a big dip in it so i'm going to put my bar in there and then see how it just lifted that two by right up so let's see if we can put a screw in it jordan to hold it got it that pulled it over too yeah and then when it, the left side was moving almost as if it was a free board i don't think it's in there very well it's just a piece of blocking for something yeah i mean this is our joist that's a two by six on the flat on top of this for blocking so see now this yeah see now we can get that to go up nice perfect all right let's put a couple of screws in this and then we'll hang drywall, I promise. All right, we're gonna rip this sheet of drywall. I'm gonna show you two ways. You're gonna, need a, you're gonna need a drywall square anyway. So our first one is 16 and three quarters, right there. You just put the blade there. And then with my left hand, I'm pulling the top of the square. And with my right hand, I'm holding the knife on that mark. The second way is to pinch the tape measure between your thumb and the blade like that uh, what were we, 16, 16 and three, and three quarters. quarters and then see how I'm lined up there and now I'm just pulling like that so this is the pro way that's you'll get a little straighter line with that and if you're not comfortable with this just do it that way all right, so we stack our drywall good side to good side back to back so on this particular sheet i'm working from the back on that sheet i'll work from the front but it doesn't matter pop it let that fall and then I get my knife in here and cut, and cut through to the paper side Now let's cut it to length. We're 88? Yeah. Before we started hanging rock, I made marks on the slab. 
where my studs are. They're not really studs. They, they put them on the flat to pad out that wall. You probably noticed it. So now I know where to put the screws. So we did a remodel. A long time ago, I had a drywall crew in there. One of my buddies. And he had two guys hanging rock. And they were really rough. It looked like a jigsaw puzzle. But when it came time to do this, the guy literally was holding the sheet. He had his hammer. And he was looking at the pipes and looking at his hammer. And I said, he's really not going to do that, is he? But he did. He just, he just eyeballed it and smashed holes in the drywall where he thought the pipes were, would be and line up. Now, they got the sheet in there, and it was horrible. And I couldn't watch anymore, so I just left. So they must have noticed that I had left and something was wrong. I didn't say anything to them at all. Because no sooner had I gotten to my truck than their boss was calling me. And he said, look, I know they're rough, but when the tapers get done, it'll be beautiful. And it was, but I just couldn't believe they were eyeballing it with a hammer and, and getting after it. <laughs> How dare they? All right, let me put a few more screws in there and we'll start hanging these things. couple little tricks on this sheet. First one is we have a box to cut around. I'm just going to put a mark on the left and right hand side of the box. And I'm going to measure down five and I'm going to measure down five. That puts me in the middle of the box. So now I know when I get my router, I just need to come down five inches between these two lines. I'm in the middle and I route around it. Our second little trick we're going to show you is this was a drop from, a, from one of those other sheets. And it's a little long, but right here, so instead of cutting it to length outside, we're going to screw it up and then we're going to scribe it and pop it off in the room. We'll show you that. Uh, but first, let's put it up here with a couple of screws. You ready, Jordan? Yep. All right, there's our mark. We're going to come down five inches. And I'm inside the box. I'm a little out of practice on this. Let's give it a whirl. Definitely out of practice. All right. Let's show well, you them. only get a couple attempts every couple of months, so. Yep, that's true. Uh, I'll do better over there. I notice we put screws here and here just to temporarily hold the sheet up and to give it a little pressure against the box. If we were to try to put a screw here, that would have just pulled through the sheetrock because the back of the sheetrock is hitting the box. Put your screws way out here, route it, then push it in, and then screw it off near the box. So let's go over here. Let's see how we ran it long. That way there's no measuring. All right, let's get over here and hang this one, bud. There's the top of our door. We scored the back of the sheet. So all we can do is pop that up. Ooh. That was terrible, but. There. Come 
lot easier than cutting all that. All right, let's try this one more time. Put a couple screws in that one. Okay. Not too bad. To get a straight edge. So this is a drywall rasp. We've already made our rip cut and we folded the sheet in half. And we're just gonna pass this on there. Gonna take off the high spots on both sheets. So now this one's ready to go for the next one, and this one's done. Quick tip on planing the side. You don't see a lot of planing anymore. All right, guys, all the drywall is up. When I say all, I mean all of five sheets. Uh, we did a job last year with 60 sheets that Jordan and I hung. The last job was 20, so it was nice to take a break and just do five. Uh, so a little tip, one thing I did before I start mudding, I like to go over and just take my knife, make sure all the screws are set. Are you, you hear that? That means that screw is proud of the surface. So I'm just gonna take a screwdriver there. I've already checked the rest of the room, so we're ready to go. And then I've noticed I get a lot more of those on remodels than I do in new construction. I think that drywall screw gun I use, I think it's easier to drive a screw in a new stud than in these old ones that are dried out and harder, I think. So just something I noticed. Now the other thing we did, we pre-filled. So pre-filling means that we use a setting type of drywall compound. Now where does it say setting? It was on over here. Setting. So what setting means is it's a powder, and as soon as you add water, it starts to harden. It's like concrete, the same process, where all-purpose mud that's pre-mixed is already mixed with water. It dries when you expose it to air, more like paint. But a setting compound dries fast. This is 90 minute, and I think that's the longest setting time that I can get locally, and I also, I've seen it as quick as a five minute uh, time, so that's, really fast it's it's setting up as you're mixing it almost so what we do we just went through and we pre-filled the bigger cracks and when i mean bigger i mean for me usually anything larger than 3 16 so we had these uh the corners so now everything's really tight and it's time to start putting our all-purpose on so let's go outside and mix that up
All right, stop messing with it, Dad. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> All right, I'm done. All right, that was quick. It was. Yep, small bathroom. That took us one day to hang it and float it, right? Not too bad today. The mud was perfect. Just put about eight ounces of water in that 50 pound uh, box, in that 50 pound uh, bag of mud, mixed it up, and that mud worked super. So this wall has quite a heavy texture on it, so we'll skim coat this. Two more coats on all the new stuff, light texture, and then we're ready for prime. Well, we hope you liked the video. Be sure to leave us a comment down below. We'll try to answer it for you, and be sure to subscribe for us. We'd really appreciate that, and we'll see you on the next one.